there's a there's a guy who uh, studies psychology, and uh, he was uh, the type of guy that uh, almost didn't believe uh, too much about God, and he was, uh, you know, he believed there's a God, of course, somebody wound the clock up and let it run, you know, and uh, for three years, we believed God, oh God, do something with Patrick Slingo, and Patrick Slingo finally had his Yahoo moment, or his hula moment, or the aha moment, or he had some sort of moment, and it came like this, uh, I believe, I believe in Jesus, just came to him, and then he ran camera, ran camera, ran camera, and as anybody that has a call of God on their life, when they see me preach, they always go like this, I can do better than that. So then, uh, so Patrick uh, started saying things like this over the last six months. I believe I've got a sermon. A sermon's coming to me. I said, well, let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'll let you know when I'm ready. And he's ready today. I want you to greet Patrick Slingo. Pat Slingo. Pat, preach the word today. God bless you. Thank you. I don't know how ready I am, but we'll give it a shot. Love you too. It's really weird being up here. I'm used to being back there. Um, Charles told the story pretty correctly. Um, before I met Ruth, before I met the family, before I started coming down here, I neither believed nor disbelieved. I had no belief whatsoever, one way or the other. I didn't know. I did not know. Um, oh, I'm not used to doing this. I'm sorry. Need a headset. Um, and coming down here, I used to just sit and watch what went on. Then I got involved in the uh, kids' church for a little bit. Um, started running camera. And at one point, when I did finally realize that I had the belief... I never thought that I could preach better than you. That's not going to happen. Um, but I felt like I had something to say. And God sort of works in mysterious ways, or he does work in mysterious ways. And I just found out doing research this morning that that's not actually in the Bible. <laughs> There's something that alludes to it. It's Romans 11.33. But I didn't give the guys that verse, so... And I don't remember it exactly, but that's okay. Um, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. So my wife will tell you when I get my, an idea about something, I will research it to death. I will look at, I will scour anything and everything that I can find about a particular thing that I either want to purchase or some information. Um, and so it came to me a phrase about six months ago. And I thought, oh, okay, this is, this is what God wants me to talk about. I never finished it. And I researched it from morning till noon, till night, over and over and over again, because I felt a pressure about, you know, I told Charles, oh, someday I'm going to get a word, and I'm going to need to get up there and, and preach this word. What I come to find out is God has a sense of humor. Well, I'm up here, so, I mean, that's pretty much <laughs> evidence right there. Um, and in his way of... We're, working mysteriously, um, that's not actually in the Bible, as we just saw, um, what I realized was God didn't necessarily want me to preach that word. What he wanted me to do was seek him. Because God knew me. God knew that 
if I got a little inkling about something, that I would research it to death. So I did. I got the Blue Letter Bible on my iPad, and I researched the living, the living out of it. Um, my wife told me to watch my language. Um, and I did. I researched it, and I, I even sought things outside the Bible to try and find what this phrase meant. And I'm sure it means something. I just couldn't find what it was. And I didn't seek her counsel and I didn't seek Charles's counsel because I felt it was for me to, to decipher and to try and figure out. So that being said, God about two weeks ago hit me again. But this time it literally woke me up out of a sound sleep. And over-researching it and researching and researching it. I'm driving myself crazy again. I'm not able to figure out exactly where it is this message is supposed to take me. So I guess in God's humorous way, he's getting me deeper into the word. He's having me seek him. And once I realized that that's what he wanted me to do, was to seek him, a light went off in my head last night at 9 or 10 o'clock. Well, it was after, it was after 10. Um, and it was seek. So the first verse I have is 1 Chronicles 16, 9 through 11. I gave you all the list, right? Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he had done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. And what I've seen over the last three years are some amazing things happen. Um, and that's made me want to seek a little bit more, yet not realizing it. It was always in my heart, but I never outwardly pursued it until God woke me up and gave me the first phrase. Um, and then again, he woke me up again with the second phrase. And I mean, I literally have pages of notes here that... I have no idea where they were going, but that's what he wanted me to do was to seek him. And the way to seek him is to be in his word. I, I went through probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, 14 different books in the Bible. Front to back, just reading and reading and reading. I got this Bible app that my wife now put on her phone. It actually reads the Bible to you. And driving around in my car, and my wife will tell you, this is not me. God did this to me. Thank you. Um, I've been listening to the books of the Bible on my phone driving around from job to job and place to place. God's moved it on me to do that because that's not my thinking. That's not the way my human brain works. Um, but God has softened my heart. He's gotten into my head. And my life has been forever changed. Uh, my father said something to me because I've been kind of fretting over this a little bit. Had a little bit of anxiety. Almost like the first time I tithed. That's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> My father-in-law had to talk me off the ledge because I literally had a panic attack. Well, I'm getting there. <laughs> Trying to take God's place. <laughs> Love you, baby. Um, Bill, many of you know, Bill put out a, uh, a challenge to the church several years ago. Um, if you tithe for 90 days... I'll reimburse you if you don't see increase. And I thought, my logical brain goes, 
That's a win situation for me. I can't lose. Either I'm going to make more money or I'm going to get my money back. So I kept meticulous records every week what my tithe was. And I started seeing it increase. And by about the eighth week or so, ninth week, I stopped keeping records because it just became ridiculous because I kept seeing it increase, increase, increase. So Ruth had said something to me about, hey, is your 90 days up? And I think my 90 days was long since up, but I just kept tithing anyway. So as far as I can tell, tithing works. And I mean, just little things like that, little things, as Charles has preached on numerous times, the little pricks that push you in the right direction. Bill's little prick about, hey, if you tithe, I'll reimburse you. But he made that, he made that to the whole church. Um, and the, the, the thing since I've accepted Christ into my life, the way my life has changed, changed for the better. Um, who I used to be, I am not who I am. Um, my father's the same way, I've noticed. Um, he came to Christ uh, well before me, um, and he was a military man growing up. And he was a colonel in the army, and I've noticed since he's accepted Christ into his life, he's been a, a much gentler person, a much gentler soul. I've noticed that about myself, too. Things that I was quick to get frustrated or angry about don't bother me like they used to. Um, I still get mad from time to time, but you know, that's life. Um, but in general, I didn't have the, uh, um, the immediacy of getting angry like I used to. Not that I was an angry person. It's just things used to irritate me, and I just get mad about it. Um, but God has softened my heart um, towards any number of things that would, would be irritants on a daily basis for me. Um, I don't know where else to go. I think that's pretty much it. I'm not sure. Which one? Jeremiah 29.13. This is a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> Behold, I am again. Jeremiah 29, 13. I heard you, Destiny. Oh, no. And ye, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Oh, yeah, I had that one. That was one of the ones I had. Um, and I have. I've poured myself into this. Um, and it's been amazing the things that I've, I've found and seen, um, things that you don't even necessarily think that are going to have an impact on you, um, sort of guided me through the whole process of getting into the Word. So I guess as a final thought, if God can take somebody like me and the things that I've done in my life and the, the past that I've had and turn me into who I am now, there's, there really is nothing he can't do. <laughs> so thank you all very much. I appreciate you all listening to me. And God bless every one of you. I love every one of you. Amen. That's my husband. Spencer, can you go ahead and put me on? He wouldn't tell me what he was going to share with about this morning. He didn't know. Oh. <laughs> so I'm going to sing a song that came to me. We drove separate. We live in Fredericksburg. We drove separate. Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment.
because of you and I want to thank you and praise you too cause your grace and mercy brought me through Cause your grace and mercy it brought me through and I'm living this moment because of you and I Cause your grace and mercy It brought me through Listen to this Thank you for saving A sinner like me To tell the whole world that salvation is free. There have been times when I did not do right, but grace and mercy watched over me. Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. And I want to. Justice demanded that I should die. But grace and mercy said, Oh no, no, because we've already paid the price. See, I want was lost but thank God now I can see and it's all because it's all because grace and mercy came down he came down and he rescued me your grace and Cause I'm living this moment because of you and I want to thank you and praise you too cause you're great. 